Ciao. I'm Julia. Julia K. I'm glad you are here. Nobody has visited me in ages. It's been years now. I must tell you my story, but I don't know where to begin. There is so much that... I should start from my childhood, but my memories of these times are vague. I only remember the summer of 1929, when they sent me off to stay with my nanny. Nanny, will you tell me the story of the White Lady? No, little sparrow. Not tonight. A fog is coming, see? Yes. I know that when it's foggy, the lady kills young women. But why is she so evil? You see, Julia, pain and suffering can make us do evil things, even if we're not actually bad. Just like soldiers have to kill other soldiers. I like the lady I've decided, Nanny. She must be in so much pain. The poor dear. She still scares me a little, though. Soon I'll be a young woman, and she could kill me. Does she kill those who love her? Of course not. That makes me feel better because I love her. But what about Martha? Would she be in danger? Your sister is with your mother, so do not worry. Do you miss them? No. I mean, yes, I miss Martha a little, but I love spending time with you. Now. Go to sleep, little sparrow. It's getting late. Okay, Nanny. I'll go to sleep and dream of the lady. Was she beautiful? She was beautiful. Yes, very much so. Then she'll be beautiful in my dreams. And will I be beautiful just like her? You'll be even more beautiful. Listen, Nanny. Since the lady won't harm me because I love her, and since you're not a young woman... Could you tell me her story, even if it's foggy outside? Please. Oh, please. Then I'll sleep. I promise. Oh, all right. You always get your own way. I loved Nanny, and I loved that story. Every time I heard it, it sounded like a new and more mesmerizing tale. Every night I would ask her to tell me about it, even though it scared me. Even now I can remember every single day of that time and how happy I was. According to an ancient legend, the lakes of the area are haunted by the spirit of a young woman who was killed by the man she loved. She was expecting a lover's stroll by the lake, gazing out at the old tree growing on the lake's island. So much hope and desire, but death, not love, was awaiting her. In despair, the man confessed he had killed her out of jealousy. So he was hanged on the small island, in the middle of the very same lake where he had killed the girl. They searched everywhere, but the girl's body was never found. Since then, her spirit, known as the White Lady, has been imprisoned in the depths of the lake. She grieves eternally for the loss of the man she loved. When fog arises, the White Lady is known to leave the waters of the lake and roam the woods, looking for her long-lost love in vain. Within the fog of dawn, hunters have claimed to hear the wailing of a woman in the distance. I'm a little scared of this story, even though I like the lady. 
Should I stop breeding, my little sparrow? No, Nanny. Daddy always tells me that fear must be faced. Go ahead. Okay, honey. Every time the sad memory of the night she perished stirs in her soul, she takes the life of a young woman by slaying such a life in its youth, even just for an instant. The lady feels free from the burden of her pain. Good night, Nanny. Good night, my love. I spent almost three years with the nanny, but when I came home, I quickly forgot how to be happy. My memories do not return until 15 years later, in 1944, when I stayed in that house. I enjoyed setting up cameras in the woods by the lake. My father created a device that attached to the cameras. It would make them take pictures at set intervals. I was trying to photograph animals or whatever else was in that damned place. Reel off the film. Open the camera. Remove the old roll of film. Put the new film in. Close the camera. Load the film. Activate the timer. Almost ready. Now to bring the image into focus. There's something floating on the surface of the water. If I frame it better, I might be able to see what it is. I would lose myself in my thoughts, but that was a rude awakening. So terrible. I instantly noticed that the person was wearing one of my dresses. I was scared. I dragged that lifeless body as best as I could to the shore, trying not to drown myself. 
Only when I lifted her in my arms did I realise who she was. It was my sister. My twin, a part of me. Dead. Impossible to comprehend. I was desperate. I didn't know what to do or to think. I have to stay calm. Martha is not dead. It's not possible. It's not true. There's no need to worry. Everything is fine. Everything will be fine. I have to stay calm. Martha, February 26th, 1923. Is everything okay? Are you hurt? What are you doing? Go, Eric, run! My parents ran towards me. My mother hugged me. She, who detested me, was now cuddling me. Her warmth filled me with life, and the pain became bearable. I felt protected. Martha, are you okay? She asked me, speaking slowly in order to let me read her lips. She thought I was deaf. She thought I was Martha. I didn't want the moment to fade, so I meekly nodded my head. I didn't realize I had done something that couldn't be undone. I would have to pretend to be Martha. Forever. July 17th, 1944. Our family is deeply saddened and is thinking of you during this extremely difficult time. Ernesto E. and family. July 17th, 1944. Our hearts are with you and we share your grief in the wake of the tragic loss of your dearest Julia. An old painting. 
I find it so sad. It communicates a sense of deep solitude to me. What the hell? For a moment I thought I saw... No, no, that's not possible. There must be this whole situation making me see things that don't exist. A telegraph box. I know how to use it. Daddy taught me. Daddy's oboe. We were preparing a really nice duet together. On the rare occasions he's at home, that is. These hunting rifles are not daddy's. He never went hunting. Nanny must have left them here. Daddy, mummy, and my grandparents. It seems almost impossible that father is a soldier. Is Mother would have been more suitable if she wasn't warm. Flowers? When mummy asks for something, there's no escaping. Daddy's canes. They are so beautiful, but I can't say why, but they have always scared me. I don't need that right now. Everything always has to be perfect with her. What's happening? Who closed the door? to sleep here of all places what hmm yes i must have fallen asleep what are they talking about you can't stay here forever why don't you go to bed no no i want to stay with my daughter your daughter your daughter you have another daughter you know the one who's still alive Remember? What are you talking about, Irena? Julia is dead. What kind of comment is that? How can you? You should be thinking about Martha. Julia harmed Martha. You know that, right? And as if that were not enough, she has now also abandoned her. It's the same old story. Everything is always Julia's fault, isn't it? Her fault for Martha being deaf and for you being infertile. Do you think it's the right time for this? Julia is dead, Irena, dead. Someone killed her. Do you realize that? Of course I realize. I get it. Do you think I'm stupid? 
No one understands it better than me. She always brought problems. Only problems. It would have been better if she hadn't been born at all. <laughs> You're crazy. I'm the crazy one? Me? They have done this to get at me, yes. Your death is all my fault. All I could ever do for you was hurt you, Julia. My poor, sweet, crazy girl. What will I do without you? What will life be like now? All the time I didn't spend with you. But now I'm home. We can go fishing together. We can take pictures of butterflies. No. We can't do anything together anymore, can we? Nothing. I miss you, Julia. I miss you. While American bombings continue to devastate the peaceful towns within the Elsa Valley, we have heard some tragic news from the area of La Ramola. The young daughter of German Army General Erich K. was murdered near her home. What possible reason could there have been behind such a cowardly act? This is what the Carabinieri, who immediately intervened, hoped to find out. Mother didn't seem to suffer from the situation. All she cared about was that my death was so painful for Martha. But not having me around anymore must have been a great relief to her. At the end of the day, it was better for everyone that it was me who died. And it was better for me too that people thought that. But the guilt began to consume me. That's when I started having horrible nightmares.
was just a dream. A horrible dream. That horrendous woman and the face of my sister. I wish all of this was a dream and my sister is just sleeping in her bed. Instead, her bed is empty and this is reality. This is Martha and me at the festival of the patron saint. It was only a few months ago, and now... Martha had asked for a picture of me to put in this frame. She wanted me to do one of those expressions of mine that made her laugh. Expressions that she couldn't quite imitate. She used to say that those were the signs of my soul. Can a photo capture the soul? Can I capture Martha's soul? Scary fairy tales. Everything seems to be scary lately. Yet everything here is so beautiful and bright. This is Martha's trinket box. It could contain something that will help to figure out what happened. Even more scary fairy tales. Martha's clothes. To me, wearing them will be like having her with me. Mummy will also be happy to see them. Or I could wear my clothes in the other wardrobe. The elegant dress. No, I'll never hear the end of it from Mother. Our beautiful home. In spite of everything, I prefer being here. It's about half past nine. It's July 18th. I always keep my trinket box locked. Oh gosh, if mummy sees this picture, she'll throw it away for sure. It's me and Lapo. I want to see him as soon as possible so we can mourn Martha's death together. The butterfly collection that Daddy made for me. Nanny will be visiting me soon. It's me with the nanny. Well, maybe it was Martha. No one can remember. I'm already dressed. Everything I need is always in my bag. The key to my trinket box. Here is my diary. July 12th, 1944. This is a new diary. We moved here today and I forgot my old one back at home. But that's okay. A new chapter in my life, a new diary. They say they brought us here for our own safety. Daddy, the war, and everything else. 
Nanny gave us her house and she went to look after the mansion. It's weird being back here after so many years. I remember Nanny telling me the fairy tale of the Lady of the Lake. It's one of the few happy memories I have from when I was little. Nanny isn't here and that's a shame, but Martha is here with me. I also get to see Lapo more often, which is wonderful. He's always hanging around here. Mum is thankfully too preoccupied with fixing up the house to worry about me. At least for now. Yes, Huey, I'll be right there. I'm just going upstairs to call Martha down for breakfast. Fine, but I'm not sure we should let her sleep all day. What do you think? What did you say? Okay, okay, I won't wake her up. I'll, I'll just turn on her light. So when she wakes up, she'll know when to come down for breakfast. They really think I'm Martha and I can't hear them. I need to be careful not to talk or I will be in serious trouble. How wonderful the snow is. Unfortunately, it doesn't snow often around here. Dad loves these prints of Florence. I find them a bit sad. There's no shortage of paintings in our house. Mum is passionate about painting. It's locked. Strange. Why did they lock my room? Mummy's family coat of arms. Martha's breakfast is ready. We can go. Yes, yes. It's getting late. Did you leave the newspaper for Martha? You know how much she likes reading it. Yes, Irena. It's on the table, can't you see? And that camera? Are you leaving it there? Yes, Irena. Can't you leave it there for a few more days? Do you mind? It was for Yulia. I will take it away soon. I, I promise. The sword makes me so sad. Seeing it there is as if... I don't know how to explain it. All right, all right, all right, but let's go now. We have too much to do. We can't stay here all day talking. Mummy is right, though. Martha always read everything. It's me who will now read the newspaper instead. They'll be out all day. The funeral preparations will take them a long time. Everything is more complex with the war. Over the next few days, I will see little to nothing of them. Brutal assassination in San Casciano. Julia Kay, 
a young woman from a respectable family brutally murdered near her home. Carabinieri investigates. A possible political motive emerges. Martha was not killed by politics or war. She was killed by something much closer and much less clear. I will find out the truth. Firm bulwark even in the skies. 159 aircraft of the Germanic defence shot down in 24 hours. Major Russian operation northwest of Jassy. Enemy convoy lost in the Mediterranean. Two destroyers and six merchant vessels sunk. First improvements in food registration. Bread rations increased by 50 grams per day as of April 20th. A kilo more every month of soup ingredients. Reforms to the treatment of agricultural workers and an unexpected distribution of jam. Julia K. Distressed but supported by faith. Irene E. the mother, Erich the father and Martha the sister sadly announced Julia's passing. The funeral will take place in La Romola, Thursday, July 20th at 9.30pm, departing from the property of the deceased. Chocolate, a privilege for few people in these times. For Julia, to take more and more photos, Dad. I can verify that the camera is still working by taking a photo. I could photograph a sparrow. There are so many of them out here. These are our vineyards. My father loved them so much that he constantly took photos of them. There might be birds around the little wall in front of the house. I always put crumbs on it for them. Bread, butter, jam and coffee. Martha's typical breakfast. I prefer honey and milk, but I'll have to adapt to her tastes, obviously. I liked watching Nanny as she cooked. I always picked up loads of techniques. Dante's Inferno illustrated by Dore. Always hanging cheery things. War. Always war. Even in paintings. One of Daddy's many photos. Who knows who these other people are? Old photographs that father took of this house. We are so lucky. In these difficult times, pantries are empty and people are going hungry. But with a German general for a father, food is never scarce. Lorenzini haberdashery. Five metres of grey cotton fabric. Six metres of white linen fabric. Four metres of green satin. Delivered on June 5th, 1944. In the event of an issue, contact us on the number 6987. And this red fabric? It's not been mentioned. Could this also be one of Mummy's, or could the nanny have left it here? These could be of use to me. Mummy's medicine. Will they do her any good? Mummy's sewing machine. 
She learnt how to sew because nobody else could do it to her liking. This fabric is not new to me, yet I do not think I have ever seen it in the house. Our wine. Daddy is so proud of it. Daddy set up his darkroom here. He doesn't take photos anymore because of his work, but photography is still his true passion. I'm allowed to use the darkroom when I want to. There are three baths when developing photos. The development bath, then the first rinse, and then the fixing bath. The second rinse is done directly in the sink afterwards. Before I can use the enlarger, I, sh Before I, can use the enlarger, I should take a photo. Daddy had this device brought here last week. It's old, but still works. He has always loved everything technological. These workbenches fascinate me. I would love to learn carpentry. This is where Nanny's husband made my dolls. The puppets I used to play with were made here. I never knew that when I was a child. They always told me that a fairy brought them. I didn't really believe them, but it was nice to think that. On the day of Saint Alexis, the battle rages in the city tormented Florence, by July 15, 1944. General Erich came. As per Count our prior Kane agreement, yesterday. we are sending Forcing you military encrypted communication the material. The device must the remain hidden and secret. Hail. Feld Mascheralo, Carl H. I don't need that right now. 